what you come to find out, what you can, what you, what you see is an offensive line that continues to make mistakes, whether it's Iki Aquanu, Pac Pro, Chandler Zavala, who finally got some reps, miscommunication, penalties that took that really long second drive uh, out of commission where they had to settle for a field goal. But I have to remind everybody that it's just preseason and these things are getting worked out now. And on top of that, they're incredibly vanilla and not really showing you much of anything. And on defense, they're missing a bunch of players anyway who did not play in this game against the Giants. So preseason is what you make out of it. And based on what I was able to watch through clips and social media and YouTube and everything else, it's just kind of more the same of what we saw in their loss to the Jets. I guess there was some optimism taken, Joe, from the second drive. It was a long drive. It ate a bunch of clock. Uh, Bryce Young was trying to make some plays and stay clean. Sometimes he couldn't, but ultimately, I thought it was a little bit of an improvement from the first preseason game, but not something I'm going to get too worked up about. You okay? Are you are you playing a joke on me right now? No, or? absolutely not. Absolutely not. Wow, what did you see? What did you see? Okay. If you play poorly, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's ping pong. I don't care if we have a if we have a lousy show. Guess what I'm going to try to do the next time we have a show? Do better. I don't care if we have no guests. I don't care if we have every guest. <laughs> I'm going to show up and show you that I'm better than the steaming pile of poo-poo platter that I just served you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The Jets game was bad. Yeah. For all of for all we can we can make all the excuses and logical reasons for the Jets performance. But after that, you have to come back and say this is who I am. Mhm. Even if it's for one freaking drive. Now, you're being kind by excluding the defense right now, who's supposed to be the who's supposed to carry this group. But it's a defense they without were, Brian Burns. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Burns needs to play. Miles Sanders needs to play. That's that is the fair logical points to make yeah. about the preseason. But you know me. I want to see fire. I want to see you breathe fire. I want to see you be interested in being there. Mm-hmm. You know who was interested in being there? Giants, yeah. That first drive, you know, all the time we talk about, hey, well, what does good coaching look like? And I always tell you, you, you get mad at me when I say this because the Supreme Court said it. Damn it, mm-hmm. you know, porn when you see it, you know, good coaching when you see it. That first drive was good coaching, and to to rehash a take from last year that was spot freaking on. You saw the difference between a real coach in Brian Dayball and Matt Rule last year. Because remember, last year was Dayball's first year. They came in. Did not screw around. Mm -hmm. He made his quarterback better. Mm -hmm. Didn't complain. Didn't go run into the owner and say, I need this. I need that. Nope. Took a guy, made him better, schemed his players up. They made the playoffs. In in large part last year, the Giants made the playoffs because they beat all of the teams they were supposed to beat. Yes. All right. So again, now I'm watching this game and I'm going, okay, Dayball looks really good. Panthers had no jump. Sure. No Brian Burns on defense. Defense was bad. Just straight up bad. Mm -hmm. The offense was, to your point, better than what we saw against the Jets. There were some glimmers there. I think there will. I, I'm not ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater here with the Panthers over no. the second preseason game. But I am ready to say to, to this group, where is your urgency? I mean, we got it after the first preseason game where we heard about meetings. We heard about the offensive line not being happy with things. You know, Iki Aquano is meeting with the media and talking about where he's at right now. He's not very happy with his game. It's a it's a far cry from where he was towards the middle of the season at the end when the offensive line was healthy and he started to come into his own. But right now, the offensive line is not healthy and Aquano has been kind of overmatched right now. And here's what he had to say yesterday during some press availability. There's been a lot of made about how much Bryce has been hit in a limited amount of time. Obviously, your job is to protect him. How much has the room kind of taken that to heart over the last couple of weeks? I mean, I think we take it, you know, uh, taking it very serious. Obviously, you know, that, that's our job in the room is to be protectors. And, uh, you know, we haven't been getting that done. So there's definitely a big emphasis in our room. And, and Bryce is always a guy, you know, we need to take care of. When he does get hit, what have you noticed from him after in the huddle? Um, he's the same guy, you know, in and, in and out. Um, regardless of the situation, he's, he's a guy that is able to kind of just reset, reset his mind uh, no matter what happened during the play and just refocus guys and um, being able to pop right back up no matter what. Um, some, I, probably one of his biggest strengths. So that's Iki Aquanu uh, during yesterday's media availability. Frank Reich also talked about some of the miscommunication that took place everybody's, there in the red zone. Everybody's so nice, aren't they? Yeah, they know, right? Just ask him the question, man. Why are you playing poorly? Yeah. Why are you struggling? Why, why don't you look like the player you were last year? 
Uh, Iki Aquano, guy here at State, great story, uh, three star guy, developed here at State, becomes you know top offensive lineman, all mm-hmm. American, all those things, top five pick, right? Last year struggled in the opener for the Panthers last year, mm-hmm. and he's a guy in general. In general, he struggles with his pass blocking. Mm-hmm. Okay, he struggled at State with his pass blocking. It was a problem at State, um, but he's talented. He's a hard worker, and as we saw last year, he is willing to dedicate. To his craft and improve. I have no doubt he will do that. The The first sack that he gave up to Thibodeau was just a miss. I mean, I don't know how he missed an assignment as the last guy at the end of the line of scrimmage. Yeah. But that's all that was. That wasn't like he was, you know, it's not like he has the yips and didn't know how to block somebody. He just didn't block the person. So I, I wasn't necessarily concerned with that block, but I am concerned overall. That was his weakness coming out of school. And the way that they played last year really accentuated his strengths, which mm-hmm. is smart when you think about it, because that's a premium asset. When you when you make somebody that high of a draft pick, that's a premium asset. And that was smart with what they did with him last year. I, I have no I, I have no doubt that they will be smart again with him this year. I'm not worried about Icky. Um, neither okay? am I, yeah. But I will say this was a knock on him coming out. So you have to find ways to help him. So maybe you chip here and there. Maybe you keep a tight end here and there. You don't really want to do that with your uh, left tackle that you've designated as your as your blind side protector, but sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do in mm-hmm. order to be successful. We'll see what they do there. Um, the Panthers, to me, again, this, this this gets back to urgency. I just want to see the urgency, and I know it's the preseason, and I get that. But one of the things we really cracked rule for was he'd give he tried to protect uh, Sam Darnold. He tried to protect uh, Kyle. Oh. Uh, Baker Mayfield. We, I don't see we, that didn't, we didn't get enough. No, they're not trying to protect, but I want to, like I said to you, yeah. If we get embarrassed, I want to come out the next time and show who we see, are. I think it's I think it's I think it's process driven right now. For, like if anything, I would actually want to see more reps for Bryce Young yes. in the preseason. Like they got their last preseason game but coming up this week. Is that how they ha- NFL teams handle this this third and because remember not they changed preseason. Not necessarily. Like Here's, I would have I would have liked to have seen Bryce play that whole first half same. against the Giants. And I would like, and I think he's gonna see if I if I have I have some comments from Frank Reich going into the third preseason game from after the Giants game. I think when he had press availability yesterday, he talked about how Bryce Young is gonna get reps. But even Bryce Young is talking about getting reps yeah. and treating the reps that he has had as though they're these precious commodities and they should be adding some urgency. Here's Bryce Young. Yeah, um, like you said, you know, it's a limited, you know, limited opportunities, but, you know, you got to make those count. And, you know, I think just listening to coaches stressing urgency of, of every situation, every down, um, you know, again, you get a limited amount of reps in the preseason, but you have to make them count. And, you know, you, because of that, you know, there's a lot of emphasis, a lot of strain to, you know, to, to be the best we can. And, you know, we understand, again, um, we, we're trying to be perfect and, you know, you're never going to get there. And we understand at the end of the day, like you said, it's been, you know, a limited amount of passes, but we try to treat those passes like, you know, it's the last one we're going to get, um, you know, especially in the preseason since it's so limited. So just kind of having that sense of urgency is something that we're, we're really trying to stress. So that's Bryce Young. Uh, I'm, glad was from, I'm glad we're in lockstep. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go too much into the it's vanilla. You can't show too much. Mm-hmm. You, you really sound like a, a bad coach there, Joe. <laughs> um, well, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Well, Frank Reich. And, uh, Frank, well, Frank Reich's been a coach in the NFL. So I, I'm pretty sure we know what he's going to call. He, he's not going to, you know, he's, he's 60, not surprising. He's anybody. also 62 years old. He's not going to completely go and reinvent yeah. himself. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't mean you can't throw a wrinkle in there, here or there. I'll be perfectly honest with you. If I if I was the Panthers, I would take the first drive that was scripted for Daniel Jones, who, by the way, is a better athlete than Bryce Young. I know we struggle sometimes with race and, and who's a better athlete and who's not mm-hmm. a better athlete and how we talk about quarterbacks. But Daniel Jones is a better athlete than Bryce Young. I, I But I also think the Giants, the way that they move Daniel Jones around and the mm-hmm. way that they use play action, mm-hmm. and that will help when Sanders is in the game, obviously. I would just go watch that script and say, hey, this is how we're going to use you because I think right now what they're doing and one thing I don't like, which is modern football, is the is is there there is no drop back anymore for your quarterback. It used to be a drop back urgency. The quarterback was mm-hmm. moving, getting a little heat on his body, feeling a little bit better, feeling like he's part of the play. I don't like the catch and stand. I don't like that. And he he it's a technique. It's it's for him to be poised. It's for him to go through his progression and do all the things that they want him to do. But I feel like it's a little too nonchalant for me. It's a little too nonchalant for me. 
if your offensive line isn't good, you move people you around. Move people around. That's why the Giants move people around. Yes. And again, you got to break Young a little bit from the and and this is where I think it will be his biggest adjustment. Okay. I don't think Bryce Young is a Hall of Famer. Okay. I don't think he will be a Hall of Famer. Okay. But you have what you have to break him from is he played at Alabama. He had time to make a sandwich. He had time to tie his shoes. Mm -hmm. He had time to take the test. Because right now, after two preseason games, Can't do it. here's what I would say about this pick, right? We bagged on the Bears because Mitch Trubisky showed up in a shitty car, and that was their criteria for taking a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, he's driving his mom's old uh, humble. Nissan. He's, he's, humble. He, he's a great leader. And it's like, because he drives a car with, 200,000 miles on? shows You're, you shows you some intangible okay man. so now the problem for the panthers presents did you take a guy because he was really good at a test because mm -hmm. i don't know if you've seen anthony richardson in some of this preseason stuff i've seen some clips i don't know if you've seen the mixtape yet i've seen them i've seen some of the clips but you could have sat pat at eight hey, and had him with more that was and i'd be we, and i was sitting here going we talked about it we now, talked about now it. that's the ultimate scratcher it's the scratch that would have been the ultimate scratcher and it's i don't also, blame them for moving up and going to get their choice of guys it's also the preseason and it is guys but, can look pretty good in these situations but that's Rookies fair but, reps he, that are, but know, what young don't. is used to young is used to sunny days yeah. that's what he's used yeah, to but I'll, show, I'll show you any i'll show you any successful football team and if they don't have a good offensive line right then it's going to be <laughs> cam mm -hmm. well cam was a singular unique talent and there you go but that's okay. what that's where people are when you see and, right and that's kind of part of this but too I, but that's also part of the building process that's as what well saying. we're literally two games into the preseason you're dubbing him not a hall of famer because we've seen two preseason no games? i i don't i I don't think he's a, a special or that, elite the, athlete. that the Panthers are not going to understand who they draft and what they have to I, do to build around him. I still have confidence in that. Okay. What I'm saying to okay. you, though, is when you are used to playing a certain way, sure, and when of course. you have when you always have a talent advantage over your opponent. Yes, it is different when now all of a sudden you're playing and Thibodeau is in your jock and, and you're going and that's something that you will adjust to. That's something you, you will adjust to. And that's what gets back to, to the... And that's why I like what he said. I like the urgency comment from him. And I like the fact that it looks like going in the third preseason game, they're going to play 